robot. Really what we're looking to do is to reduce the amount of hospital acquired infection. That's people going into surgery and they wind up you know, getting an infection in the hospital. It can be quite a serious deal. Our school was actually approached by a doctor who works in India and New York. And he came to us and said, you know, in India this is a really big problem. People are getting sick. You know, I'd like to do something about it. So as we started researching how to solve this problem, we realized it's not just a problem over there, it's a problem worldwide. Um, we have, you know, hospitals down the road from our university contacting us, you know, looking to get involved with this project. Um, so our solution is a sensor that takes in an air sample and passes ultraviolet light through it. Now this is a common technique called spectroscopy, and you can get bench top models for like uh, several grand, which use ultraviolet lasers to characterize not just the amount of bacteria, but what it is. What we've done is scaled that technology down in ultraviolet LEDs. Now these are much more affordable, and in, as a trade-off, you don't get the specificity, but you get a general idea of the environment and the room you're in. Um, you want to go ahead? Sure. So, essentially, th this technology isn't just applicable in hospitals. It's a problem <laughs> both abroad and, and locally, but it's not just limited to hospitals. It's something that you can also use in any food preparation facility, nursing homes where you have a bit of compromised patients, any place where there's a lot of foot traffic. Another key component of our design, along with being low cost, so that it can be, it can easily enter emerging markets, is that it is modular, meaning that the sen meaning that the sensor component, at the very least, can be taken off of the robotic platform and operated completely independent. This here uses a USB interface, so it can be connected up to any computer, and it can be s the size the size of it can be scaled down such that it can be implemented many different other types of devices. So you can place it in air vents, you can place it on a floor behind a, behind a computer, in front of a computer, um, in any part of a room really. But Another so, yeah. advantage to our device is its auton is our autonomous robotic platform, which obviously allows us to cut, uh, to reduce manpower and reduce time. Um, Several testing procedures require that you wait uh, before scanning um, a operating room. Like a people needs to wait at least 30 minutes before they can send someone in to sterilize it. Well, our device can just go in right ahead, take a reading, and then inform them of what is inside the area. So our teammates in India have actually done testing at actual sites, um, which also gives insight into the current procedure. So I'd like to talk about that. Actually, we did the manual testing in India in various uh, for processing industries and hospitals. Uh, we take the samples of some surface areas which are there. Um, we, we just took the six samples over there. Uh, they are with sanitizers and without sanitizers. Uh, that's what we can know the uh, detection of bacteria uh, in but the, in order to know the amount of bacteria present in that area, we need to actually incubate the sample for 48 hours at least. But this device will give the reading instantaneously so that the corrective action can be taken instantaneously. <laughs> So the path forward is really up to the Cornell Cup is test, test, test. We really want to see how well we've actually met these problems and see if we need to revise what we have or if we need to pair it with other technology. And we're working very hard with stakeholders in this. Um, they'll grant us access to hospitals for testing and in turn we can make sure we work with them to get them exactly what they need. Um, there's also a lot of interest in getting uh, concentration mapping so you understand you know, where the high levels of bacteria are in the room and then also a centralized processor. So you have all these robots in different rooms, you can send all that data back, and you can have one person looking at a real-time map of your hospital. Um, there's also interest in getting it to uh, actually sterilize the room as well. There's another team here doing something similar, so you can see how with our modular sensor, you can pair it with a device like that. Also in the path forward, uh, the autonomous robotic platform has its own charging base, which it can return to automatically. And in the path forward, it would be great if this uh, docking station could be upgraded in order to sterilize the device autonomously as well. Basically, a UV hood that yes. the robot could find itself. Yeah, because you don't want you don't want to cross contaminate. After you send in this robot, you want to make sure it's 
somewhat sterile before sending it in elsewhere because <laughs> you, you don't want to create a bio burden. That's another thing that you're reducing by offloading this to a robot. When you send a human in to go test for bacteria, viruses, or even to sterilize, they bring with them their, their own bacteria and viruses. And that could skew the results. That could be the difference between whether or not a patient gets infected or not. That, by offloading that to a robot, we can eliminate that risk entirely and save lives. So I think um, the demo is part of this, right? Yes. 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 Okay. I think we should get moving on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sensor first, I believe. Uh, we're, we're sure. We can do we'll get the robots robot. fired up. Yeah. Okay. Our sensor's right up front here. We'll get okay. out of your yeah. way. Paul, you're going to drive? So so we're showing the two separately. Um, as we said, the sensor is... The, the sensor is autonomous. It's able to... It, it is modular. It's able to hook up to any computer. Of course, supposing it doesn't get the demo jitters. <laughs> <laughs> I just had it working 10 minutes ago. <laughs> there we go. I'll just run the... Uh, disconnect sound? Uh. There we go. Test program there. Uh, are you able to all see it on screen? Yes. Okay. I currently have the UV actually disabled, but I'm going to run through the motions of this. I, I just haven't done a full, full test yet as to scattering in the device, so I don't want to have the, even a potential risk of giving anyone cancer, so I don't have the UV LEDs hooked up at the moment. But I will run... Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, let me try that one more time. So we did run into an issue. This is all integral through the Atom board on the robot. Um, there's an issue with our PCB, um, hence why they're not actually integrated right now, but we do want to show that we have this functionality. We can task the sensor and we can task the robot. There we go. Having an issue with USB ports on my computer as well. <laughs> but it does send does send all the commands from the computer here. I, like there's ah, uh, I I, w I wish I had a better demo. <laughs> but. Essentially, it does all hook up through the computer. We do have two programs here, one of which, if this is flaky, I probably can't showcase, but Andrew can talk to it yep. a little bit. So one of the important things about this is we want to be able to test the sensor independent of the robot as well, basically in a lab environment where you don't have room for this robot to be driving around. So we do have an independent program written for rapid data collection where you can just take in a lot of data. And then the calculation uh, side is actually another mode of that program. So you can run various tests on the same sample data to understand you know, how well your calculations are making this, especially um, looking at noise variables and such in our actual sensor design. Um, so I think we're going to have you walk around now so you can see the robot side okay. of things. And I mean, like, for you to use the, the, like, the manual there's still an aspect of that where, where you have to like point the object and then have some sort of distraction here. You can't be shaking, you know, it's like around. Especially with small hospitals. You know? Um, it uses a SLAM algorithm in order to efficiently map its scanning environment. And as you can see, it's very fast in finishing uh, its sweep. It's already returning to its base now. And now you have to see it drop. The sensor module will be mounted on top of the Intel Atom. This right here is a mock-up of a very early prototype of the, sens of the sensor chamber. I'm just going to place it on top here to demonstrate where it will be mounted. Yeah, it's going to be facing the other way. That way. And so it just picks up air as it, it moves, yeah. not being swept up from... Um, it could be modified to do either or, but right now uh, it has its own fan which sucks in. Which yeah. will pull the air in from okay. forward. Right. Yeah. Yeah. As, you, up about on time. as you can see, we have full control of the robot one way or another. It has its own algorithms that have active avoidance and he can very easily control it by himself. <laughs> Dave's presentation time is up. Oh.
you have seven minutes for Q and A starting now. What's the role? That one is not the one you built, right? This one is. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. They both have minor modifications, like because we're going to be building two devices, but this one isn't complete yet. Oh, so the board goes on those little pins on yes, that one? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, okay, I see. Okay. So in the future, the Atom will be integrating with that sensor, right? Yes. yes okay. Yes. Yeah, it can pass, but we just had issues with our PC. Yeah, yeah. This okay. code that I'm running right now on my laptop, I, I can easily run on the board as well. But so it's it like the navigation? Yeah, this yeah. is just manual navigation. So it'll be doing navigation as well as the sensor interface. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. But is it the idea that it just takes one representative swipe of the room, or does it try to cover an entire room or something? It covers the tries to cover a It does? Uh -huh. Okay. One, one key feature with the Nito is that it breaks up a large room into sectors, and it, and it covers those. It cleans, uh, it maps the whole room before it commences cleaning, and it then it cleans the room in a lab of powering all obstacles. Uh, hospital rooms have a lot of obstacles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And one, one key feature with the Nito is that we didn't want a system where we'd be bumping into things because, in a, especially in an operating room, that's a big risk. So oh, yeah. you bump into a table right next to an operating bed and knock, knock the scalpel off the table. Originally, we were considering Nishan. using the Roomba, but the Nito platform is much faster. Okay. We're currently uh, any questions? Can you tell a little bit about how the sensor works? Okay, so I'll, I'll, use the I'll use the early prototype to showcase it. So on one side, you'll have two UV LEDs mounted. I'll uh -huh. show that. Okay. And on the opposite side, you'll have UV photodiodes. Those have a fixed path length, and the UV LEDs will, will shine light into the photodiodes. The difference between whatever's not transmitted we're assuming is either absorbed by bacteria and viruses or it is a gouge of noise, which is essentially how we're explaining anything that, any any sort of scattering or debris that... But what about reflects. dust? Yeah, yeah so exactly. that's the question about dust. Skin. What about dust and what about uh, dead skin? Mm -hmm. That's biological. So dust will invoke scattering, but it's safe to assume that in a room you're going to see similar levels of dust all the time. So it's essentially a background noise. So part of the testing is to determine, you know, scattering due to dust. But we don't want to filter out the dust because bacteria likes to cling to it. Yeah. So we still want to get that absorption. Okay. Good representation. Okay. Of the okay. And yeah. again, with skin cells, you expect again in a room to see similar amounts. So it again is looking at variations of it. Okay. And, and, and plus, even in that type of case, it's better to have a false positive than a false negative, mm -hmm. especially when we're dealing with, with live scan, yeah. essentially. Yeah. Regarding the robotic platform, due to it not being due to it being proprietary, modifying it has been quite a challenge. Um, sending some commands requires the severing of the USB link, which is needed to send the commands. So in order to send the automatic like clean mode commands, which lets it use its slam and obstacle avoidance algorithms, and we designed a circuit to temporarily break this interrupt of uh, this link in order to fool it into thinking that the cable is actually going to plug it into. Yeah, unfortunately we can't showcase that because that is integrated with, with this circuit over here. So. Uh -huh. What type of user interface are you envisioning? How will someone get the results saying that there's contamination or there isn't? So we'd like a graphical interface. Um, we had issues passing the interrupts from the buttons and LCD screen on there into the Atom side. They are all rooted through the FPGA on that board. Um, so for lack of that, now we have just audible alarms for the prototype, and then the data is stored on board for uh, detailed analysis later. Um, but we would like to eventually integrate hardware and the sensor in board of a robotic platform. In which case, you get a bespoke UI for uh, people just to see. We want a relative level, um, basically safe or unsafe, and then an actual, you know, rough number or calculation for a better understanding. Any other questions? So, yeah. So, other than hospital use, you said you had some other use cases. Go over that again. Some other, some other places I see this device being very useful. Food processing facilities. You see cases of salmonella outbreak happening. There was one just a couple weeks ago, actually, here in the states. In it can be used even in pharmaceutical companies because actually we have approached several drug manufacturing units. 
they said that at, for doing this, for, in order to estimate the amount of pathogens present in their premises, they have to incubate the sample for five days, according to the European standard. So instead of that, this device will give the result instantaneously so that the corrective action can also be taken. And then what's the relative sensitivity though? I mean, incubation is done for reasons to, yep. it's basically because the amplification. Because it is a so microbiological yeah. process. In order to because the bacteria has to grow. I understand that part. There's a reason why it's done. The reason why it's done is to amplify yep. Yep. the pathogen. Yeah. So, yes. so you have to have that amplification basically built in. So tell me a little bit about the sensitivity of that yeah. as compared to that. So we need further testing to fully understand where we're at. Um, okay. This is pretty much the hardware demo right here. We need right. to move on to full-scale testing for several months just to get okay. a good uh, right. so, idea of where we're at. So as far as the introduction of like MRSA, which I was going to ask you if you brought some. <laughs> no, I was going to leave the room if yes, the answer was yes. Excuse me, from a field trial you know, perspective, what did you guys propose on doing? Yeah. Um, yeah. <coughs> like in a compar comparative process, they are physically counting yeah. the number of colonies. But here, the absorbance, the bacteria, to the two LEDs which are used emit UV at different wavelengths which can be absorbed by viruses and bacteria. Yeah. So depending upon the absorbance, the concentration is calculated according to the real and so and it can directly give the uh, value, the count, bacterial result. count. But you, can cor but you can correlate that against yes. the, yeah. the, the measured results? And was that in your testing? Yeah. Was that yeah. what you're trying um, to do yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that would excuse me. definitely be in our testing as yeah. we go forward. Okay. And we would definitely, and we, we, when we intend to set a baseline by measuring in say a clean room so okay. that we have an absolute absolute bottom essentially and work okay. up from there. Okay. Be able to then be able to tell. Yes. Exactly. So then a further question. So this is primarily from airborne yes. Yes. versus contact. Yep. Right? Yes. Could you think about the, the contact issue? Yes. And we, um, maybe whether or not you would even take on that. Yep. So um what are our recommendations for service standing? Um, it's in our actual final presentation. Okay. Up, but, um, okay. Okay. Yeah it is in a Right. Fair enough. Future. Thank you very much. Have you tried funguses? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's for, for the drug manufacturing, that's where they're products.